Okay, confession time. I discovered Jerma because I fell for the red sex serial killer AI meme. It completely got me. I showed my mom, I showed my boyfriend at the time, I remember convincing myself that I saw Ted Bundy's forehead, which I didn't. I have never been gotten that good by a meme before. So when I learned that not only was it a meme, but it was a meme perpetuated entirely by a streamer's community, without the streamer having any knowledge of it whatsoever. Look, it was a Reddit thing, I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, did somebody link me a thing where he's like, oh, look, you're like a serial killer. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I laughed for a second. I was like, oh, haha, germ of the serial killer with the AI technology. And I woke up the next day, and it was on the front page of every Reddit, and people thought it was a real thing, and everyone just associates me with a fucking, like, a murderer. I don't think I see it. That's like 50,000 upvotes on the front page. And I was like, all right, I just, I closed, I just like, I closed my phone. I was like, okay, well, I guess we're doing that now. I had to know more. And the more I watched, the more I realized that that streamer, German985, was empirically speaking, the best streamer on the internet. And probably, honestly, the greatest streamer of all time. And this video is me proving that. So, to begin. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna introduce myself right here. My name is Germa. Germa started as most successful Twitch streamers do, on a different platform. He made his first YouTube channel in 2011 under the name Jerma985. This was a combination of a play on his name Jeremy and the month and year he was born. This is a deceptively normie and boomer username origin for someone capable of doing things like this. <sighs> so I didn't even need to- whatever. Ooh. <laughs> His focus was Team Fortress 2 commentary, and though initially there is an emphasis on actual gameplay technique and strategy, his personality shines through almost immediately. And you saw what I was doing, I was like just smashing into people just like, like, like a fucking fridge, like a walking fridge is pretty much what I was. So I come up around here, try to get the dead ringer up, try and make something happen with the last minute here, and this is the actual noise that I made when this happened. I kid you not, this is the exact noise that I made in this situation. You ready? His now iconic love of bits and characters is also basically instantaneously present. This is the third video he ever posted on his channel, with no context prior or since. Hello, everybody. My name is... Kill Joe Golem, I'm Jeremy's, um, his, his grandfather. And today we're gonna play Insane Aquarium. Okay, so this is how it starts. You, you click to feed these little fish face fucks. And then, you know, they, 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 they drop the dog shit, and you click it, and you get money. The channel gained traction really quickly, and essentially every subscriber milestone is an increasingly surreal skit. But then he also balanced out the insanity with the occasional genuine personal life update. At the time, he was a 20-something guy in Boston just figuring his life out. And if you go back and look for it, you can hear him talk about all of the struggles that come with being a young adult and finding yourself and trying not to die. <laughs> As his channel grew, so did his content. He started collaborating with people. He played games other than TF2. His skits got wackier. The more videos he made, the stronger the Germagic became. Slowly but surely gaining a loyal following and giving us gems like this. Rats, we're rats, we're the rats. We pray at night, we stalk at night, we're the rats. I'm the giant rat that makes all of the rules. Let's see what, what kind of troll we can get our gems into. Looking back at his YouTube catalog, you can see that German never really tried to jump on any trend, or catch any wave, or tried to clickbait his videos. It seems like he never really got caught up in a numbers game, or felt compelled to play anything that he didn't actually enjoy. This was a white man who did funny voices and had a gaming channel in 2012, and he didn't play Happy Wheels once. He didn't momentarily try to inflate his viewership, and in doing that, he ensured that the community he built was a quality one. From the very beginning, even through spicing skits and character videos throughout TF2 gameplay, he was building a unique backlog of varied content, where Jerma and his sense of humor was the only common denominator linking them. So when people subscribed, they didn't do it because they liked the way he played one specific game or genre. They did it because they liked him. This gave him the freedom to make whatever he wanted to make. 
I don't know how calculated that was from an artistic standpoint, but honestly, I think it just happened as a natural side effect from him only making things he was passionate about and refusing to back down from that principle. At his most active, he was posting a video every other day. Some days he wanted to play GTA 5, and some days he wanted to do a skit where he electrocuted himself into knowing the lore of Metal Gear. Oh, no, 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 no. Metal Gear Solid story. I must not have hit play. I must have fallen asleep. Oh, fuck. I got time. It's for the launch of Metal Gear. Metal Gear Solid 5, the launch party. That variation helps stave off or limit creator burnout for as long as possible, until something more fulfilling came along. As far as I can tell, Jerma made a YouTube channel for three reasons. He wanted to entertain people, he wanted to play video games, and he wanted a creative outlet. Live streaming let him do all three at once instantly. So in 2016, after uploading the biggest project of his career at the time, the Live Germa Rumble, where classic and never before seen characters live action wrestled while Germa commentated, costing an approximate $10,000 to produce, he effectively abandoned the channel, shifting all of his focus to a brand new one called Second Germa, where he uploaded stream highlights from a Twitch channel. No, don't go on the top rope! Don't, do don't go on the no, top no, rope! Don't go on the top rope! No, I can't take it! I can't do it! Oh, oh shit! No, don't, don't go on the top rope! Don't, don't do it! I don't do it! Please don't go on the top rope! No, I can't take it! I can't take it! Oh! Oh! Oh shit! Jerma had streamed before, but in 2016, he really began devoting his energy to it. Streaming three times a week, consistently, barring personal tragedy. If you consider this constancy the beginning of his career, then he was never a small streamer. According to Twitch Tracker, he was pulling in 1,000 concurrent viewers as soon as he began taking it seriously. And with those 1,000 viewers, all from the YouTube community he cultivated specifically to be down for anything, he went for it. There was obviously a learning curve. On Twitch, you can't edit things out. Not every second can be entertaining. You need a certain level of endurance and stamina to sit and stare at a screen and engage with chat for hours at a time. You're the star of a live show that you're also doing the lighting production and stage design for. But after a while, Jerma thrived in those conditions. Much like his YouTube channel, Jerma doesn't really confine himself to any games or catch any metas on Twitch. He plays games that intrigue him regardless of popularity, allowing himself and chat to have a novel experience to interact with and bounce off of. This man had a Twitch channel in 2018, and he played Fortnite for the first time last year. They're not real characters, but they can, uh, they can dice you up. Doesn't look like we have too many people here with us. Nice. There's one other, at least one other player for sure. <laughs> As a person, he's a Looney Tune. He loves characters and voices and silly faces. He loves a good elaborate bit. This is what an old gameplay live let's play commentary was like in 2005. Yeah, and, and, and it's in his bandy cam. Ba Where's that act? I'm, I'm dedicated to this joke. Fucking piece of shit. Fuck. I just don't get every time when they come over. Let me send those to you. You get the same number, dude? <gasps> ah. 
He loves a good noise. Is that a is that a mask or does he actually have two heads? We got it. He has a very opinionated, very bouncy brain, and it feels like it can go on really specific anodyne rants forever, like one of those thermal physics birds. I've run my dishwasher because otherwise it'll get gross. I wash by hand. I don't like that idea of take. Oh yeah, there's like a bunch of fucking like saucer and like mess on my plate. Just stick it in here and turn the water on. No. I don't like the dishwasher. I don't like it. And you know why also I don't like the dishwasher? All the people question marking me right now. So you enjoy putting like your dishes in this thing. And then you, like for like at least one to two fucking hours, you hear... <laughs> It's fucking obnoxious. It's obnoxious. And it lasts for an hour. An hour. Two fucking hours of this. You can... I, I, I can wash a whole fucking sink of dishes in 20 minutes. Dishwashers are just loud, annoying. They take way too long. A bunch of water. No, 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 no. Sometimes I'll use it if I need to. You know? But no, never. Sounds like your dishwasher sucks. Your dishwasher's broken. What are you talking about? He also has the tendency to say exactly what he's thinking as he's thinking it, and it looks insane, and it also makes it feel like there's a silly guy and a serious guy battling inside him in an ancient holy war for control of his mind. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, they don't know shit! The aliens don't know anything! We are- Alright, I'm freaking out. I'm losing my mind, but yeah, I, you get what I'm saying. No, you could not. Are you telling me that I don't fill out a medium shirt? Well, what is this? Th no, I like this. Don't rip it. On paper, I guess the best way to describe his sense of humor is a hyper-surrealist kind of absurdist improv. But it's not that heady when you watch him. He's just a guy who's willing to commit and expand on bits that make him laugh. And the bits that make him laugh are usually deranged. He really enjoys streaming. I know that sounds simple, but really, he has so much fun doing bits and going on tangents and telling jokes and playing games. And that enthusiasm is infectious as a viewer. He's having a blast. And you kind of do too. They could be, uh, you look like John from Garfield. You know what? Fuck off, okay? I'm getting this off. I'm not John from Garfield, for God's sakes. Get it off. Get it off me. Fuck <laughs> Get it off. I don't want it on it anymore. Fuck! No! It can't be! It is. I'll stand up. Fine. Fuck it. Whatever. Who cares? I'm gonna explain this like you're an alien who doesn't know what Twitch is for a second, okay? All streams operate with a set dynamic between the live streamer and the chat observing them. You as a chatter are a passive passenger, willingly aboard a ship that the streamer is a captain of. The interactions that happen from chat land within a comfort binary, established by the streamer and enforced by the moderators and the greater community. This comfort binary dictates the kind of jokes that are told, the lingo and emotes used, the way the chat talks to the streamer and to each other. But the streamer is also bound by a binary, the rules they set for themselves, the limits they have in their head as to what they can do, what they can say, what their goals for the stream are, what they believe to be entertaining, and how they can supply that. At its most removed, chat is purely an audience just there to watch, with little to no actual interaction being fostered. As you go down the line, however, there are two main avenues of interaction. One, donating money, which we'll talk about later, and two, interacting with an activity that the streamer predetermined. Playing marbles, joining a game lobby, sending in a TikTok for them to laugh at, sending in your picture or profile for them to rate, things like that. Notice that both methods of interaction here are directly providing the streamer with something that can be turned into content in some way. They're playing games while talking to chat, all the while mindful of the conduct they believe chat is expecting and their bottom line. With Jerma, the emphasis is flipped. He's talking to chat while doing an activity. 
the game is supplementary to his interactions with chat, and he's always open to new detours and new jokes that he couldn't have possibly imagined when he began streaming that day. Some of my favorite Germa moments are when a random chatter ignites an idea for a bit, and then watching as he tries to execute it live. Somebody just said I had mustache hair. Somebody said my hair was a mustache, and I kind of want to, like, fuck with that. Can I get, like, a a clean-shaven person's face and then put, like, put this on here? That's better. I can't believe my hair is actually a mustache. That's so embarrassing. What if I put like different eyes? I mean, we've already done this. I did this, but not this exact thing though. Hold on. Strap in, this is gonna get real fucking weird. Hey kids! I'll get the nose, hold on. I'm gonna get every piece of my face. We're going to rebuild my face. Inch by fucking inch. You think I'm kidding? We're doing the whole thing. This looks so fucking odd. This is way harder than it looks. I've been holding a photo for f 10 straight minutes. Take the fucking photo, please, God. Did it. Done. Hey. <laughs> it's like somebody broke glass. That's all this looks like. Put the mustache on. Oh, God damn it. Fine. Hold on. <laughs> it's gone. I don't know where it went. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it went. Where did it just go? Do scat man? Oh, I don't even know the lyrics to that. Scat. <laughs> oh my. Ah! Oh my fucking god. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. I mean, let me try. I'm a scat man! That's the only one that's left is the mustache, really? Ugh. Oh, it's hot. Um, so that, that, that was 30, that was 35 minutes of that. By the way, just realizing. I feel like that may have, may have gone on a, a little too long. That whole thing happened because one guy said something about his hair. 30 minutes worth of reconstructing his face with his face, singing Freddie Mercury, Scatman, all made possible from contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Twitch can foster really intimate, close-knit communities better than any other social media platform on the internet. 90% of Twitch is built on individual conversation and connection and community. But somewhere between 15,000 and 10,000 concurrent viewers, the individual disappears, and previous connections become impossible to maintain. The faster chat goes, the less likely your message will be read. So chat devolves from distinctive people having a conversation into a hive mind groupthink that can only communicate generally broad sentiments using little pictures of a frog formerly known as racist. The streamer's ability to read individual messages is inadvertently put behind a paywall. If you really need your words to be acknowledged, you have to donate money to grab their attention. This is no fault of the streamer, really. It's more of just a natural part of progression on the platform, and large groups of anonymous people are at best boring and at worst fatal. But one look at Germa's stream, you'll see it's different. Well over 10,000 concurrent viewers, chat still looks like individual people. Maniacs, every last one of them, but distinct maniacs. Emotes are rare compared to other chats, and spam is cracked down upon immediately. He also, very notably, turned alerts off. So there are no shiny parasocial bells or whistles that go off if you donate money. A first-time chatter has the exact same likelihood of their messages being read aloud as someone who just donated $20. Instead, he has credits roll at the end of every stream showing the names of people who subbed or donated that day. 
and subs and donations respectively are read and appreciated after the stream turns off. So everyone donating is doing it with the knowledge that he will know about it, but you won't be there to see it. You're supporting him because you want to. This is great for a million different reasons, but my favorite is that it exercises the lonely parasocial ghost that haunts all Twitch streams. It elevates everyone to the same level and humanizes the whole experience in a way that I wasn't sure was possible. He also hosts events that showcase creativity within the community with things like movie night streams, where he watches videos they made with green screen footage he supplied, or the Germ Awards, where the best and worst moments from the year are submitted and narrowed down and voted on and appreciated. None of that would land if the community itself wasn't just as funny as Germa. And I thought for a really long time about what a good example would be to demonstrate the unique dynamic Germa has with his chat that would also show how strange chat is on its own. Remember, I only started this Germany because I got got by a meme they made for fun. And if I'm going to be a respective video essayist, I need something better than that. Something bulletproof to back up my claim here. Someone who's a good chat ambassador that embodies everything that makes Germa's community so special. Just one moment that showcases what I'm talking about here. Just, just one person. Just one guy. Jerma is known for doing really well-produced, high-quality event streams. Just last year, he did a baseball stream, where two teams, each composed of a mix of professional athletes and professional clowns, played a full game of baseball. Jerma was the empire. It was hilarious. But in the months leading up to the stream, he kept those details private. So naturally, people would ask questions about the baseball stream and chat. This is the story of someone who answered one of those questions. <laughs> That's definitely gonna get removed. That's gonna get removed for a moderator. But it was fucking crazy. I, I don't- I'm not gonna encourage this behavior, but I'm gonna tell you something right now. Don't fucking- this is not to be encouraged, but it was just like, what the fuck, man? Uh, somebody asked what the baseball stream is. And I said, whatever, and then like, it's been like five minutes, it's been like at least five minutes. Somebody like added that person, I think, and said he's gonna shove an entire baseball up his ass. On stream. <laughs> this person's name, too, yeah, what the fuck? Their name was Ball Fondler, okay? Okay? Do you want me to tell you more? Cause like, I could tell you more. Are you questioning me reading messages in chat? I read a chat message that said, I said I was gonna shove a baseball up my ass. You guys have no idea. I said it yesterday, it's rent free. Every day I think about somebody just typing out, oh, no, yeah, dude, let me help you out here. Oh, you're like a new viewer? Yeah, let me help you. He's gonna shove a whole baseball up his ass. That's the baseball stream. There's so much, there's so many layers to why that's funny. So many. I keep hyping it up, man, on the baseball stream, man, be ready. <laughs> it's gonna be me putting a baseball in my ass? And I'm hyping it up for months and months and months and months in a like in a baseball field. Or even not, well, am I just here? That's what makes me laugh so much is I'm the baseball stream. Oh, he's going to play baseball. No, it's me in this chair putting a baseball in my ass. Dude, baseball stream. What, I wonder what that is. A oh, new viewer. Oh, replying to that person. Just, just being a motherfucker. Hey guys! Hey! Oh yeah! Welcome to the baseball stream! It's time! Get hype! It's the baseball stream! I've been talking about this for a long time! You know the stream where I shove a baseball up my ass! And that person's banned from the channel, right? Mods, like, please refresh my memory. That person has been permanently banned from this, from German 985, right? They are permanently banned. They, they're never, they're, ne they're not allowed here ever again. Oh, wait, they weren't? No. Oh. This is, the, 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 hold on, the rabbit hole just got deeper. This is fucking unbelievable, hold on. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> this is the, <laughs> this is the, <laughs> this is the original message. But it gets be like, uh, this, this just kept going. I didn't even know this kept going. 
I can't show the rest of these, but he, he goes on. He goes on. Oh, my God. He goes he goes on to say, how many baseballs do you think you'll be able to do? At German 985. <laughs> what the fuck? How many do you think? It's hard to fit so many up there, don't you think? His... <laughs> it's pretty gruesome. Okay, you know what? Mm-mm. I bet he's gonna do vocal warm-ups. Omega lull. Plucking his ass hairs for the baseball stream. This guy's gonna get this guy's gonna get snapped. This guy's getting Thanos snapped right now. This person, this person's just been out there. We, we've been with this person's been out there in the wild. But anyways, he's been banned. It only gives you a whopping 83% off the regular price, but also three months of uh -oh. service oh, totally hey. for free. That's Surfshark. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Is this a, oh. we, we've yeah, got a streaker. Good. We've got a streaker, oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. He came up through the quad, through the gymnasium, outside the field. You might have seen it on Twitter. You might have seen it uh, posted somewhere in you. May yeah, can I confirm that that's true? Ball Fondler has officially been unbanned. They are officially not banned from the channel. They can post uh, freely. Probably just going to get banned again. I'm just going to let's just read what Ball Fondler said. Uh, let's see if it's, it's uh, worthy of a ban here. Ball Fondler, it's been a week and a half. Play Skyrim, Ego Andy, holy shit, nice wiener, bro. He's fully naked, by the way. He's naked. Camera or naked. Stand up. Skyrim, play Skyrim. I will never back down. Hmm. Well, I gotta tell you, that last statement there, that shows perseverance. That shows... That shows that you, that you, you, you can, you can, you're taking life by the reins, you know what I mean? So you're okay for now. A good detective um, covers every base. Any other situation? Did Coney jump back two in? Other people Who's no. Coney? Yes. Yes. <laughs> what? I, th Who's I agree. Ball yeah. Get this guy out of here. <laughs> get this guy out of here. Get this guy out of here. Best way to. How do we get? How do we get? How do we get? How do we get this guy out of here? How did he get the code? I don't know. He's been leaked at various times. Yo, he joined so we could see his name and then he left. Ball Fondler didn't donate money to have his message read. He didn't spam. He was just a person in chat. He was just a man with a vision and a dream and an affinity for balls. And the community and Jerma built this wonderfully strange inside joke around him to the point where he was acknowledged in multiple ways in the actual baseball stream, which we're going to talk about. But first, I need to be a hater. We really wish that you would just stop hating on goths everywhere. That's not cool. What if people started hating on you? Yeah, Manson420. What if everyone started hating on you? Or GNIT68. What if. What everyone... kind of name is that anyway? Yeah. GNIT. Whatever. Streamers are at the dawn of a new kind of entertainment. At the upper levels, they have thousands of people at their fingertips waiting for them to go live and watch them do whatever they want. That's power, influence, and immediacy that has never been seen before in the history of mankind. So it only makes sense that as streaming grows as an industry, they would begin to wield that power and make more produced official events and shows. And they have! And they've been scuffed, hackneyed versions of game shows that have been popular since the 1970s. I'm so sorry! Take Ludwig. Inarguably a titan of live streaming. I think he's immensely talented. I think he's actually funny. He's clearly demonstrated that he's capable of doing remarkable events. But when he got the chance to make a high production, quality, quasi regular show, he did Leapfrog Learning Friends Baby Jeopardy and a Family Feud knockoff. Like two separate Family Feud knockoffs. Miskiff owned a content org. At the top of his career, he had a guaranteed 15k minimum concurrent viewers. He could have done anything he dreamed of, and he did an extended edition director's cut of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? with guests so routinely insecure they cheated every episode. 
Will Neff and Austin Show have proven time and time again that they are some of the most capable and compelling entertainers on the platform. We know they can skillfully execute unique ideas for shows. We've seen them do it. And when they came together to combine their talents and got money from an actual production company, they made an iPad mobile edition of The Price is Right. And it's not even just a lack of originality. Loot Goblins by OTK is a high production, somewhat original concept, and it has sets and lighting and a theme they bang into the ground, and it's still so bad and so awkward and hollow, and it feels like an 8th grade class being forced to perform Shakespeare. On a purely technical level, all of the shows I just listed are incredible. It's abundantly clear that a lot of people worked really hard to pull them off. But conceptually speaking, they're all shows that are disappointing to me for one reason. They worked backwards. They're all hackneyed and bland and poorly recycled ripoffs because they were built to harness and capitalize on the pre-existing inertia of whatever guests they had on and the fan bases that they brought with them. They were built entirely for the Twitch ecosystem, so the concepts didn't need to be independently engaging or unique or even good because their target audience wasn't there for the concept. Not really. They were there to see their streamer interact with other streamers in a new location in a silly costume. There's a part of me that says that's not a bad thing. That pragmatically and financially speaking, it makes sense. That these fan bases are used to watching people play video games alone in their room for hours on end, and that's comforting to them. So to see those people out in the real world doing a fun activity, interacting with other people, is compelling in its own right. That at this stage, old media companies seeing streams with big numbers force them to recognize the legitimacy of the online economy as a whole, that that's good, that if it works, which it seems to, and the audience is happy, which they seem to be, there's not much use in complaining. But it's so hard to look at that without feeling like it's a massive waste of an unprecedentedly large opportunity, right? If you have a group of people that will watch you do whatever you want solely because it's you and your only job is to keep them entertained, then make it weird and bold and creative and good and insane and innovative and new. Ask yourself, would someone who didn't know anything about you watch it and be entertained? Because if that answer is yes, and you already have thousands of people rooting for you to succeed, ready to support you live, that's where the magic can happen. Do you see where I'm going with this? Have I ever talked about where I got the money for the live rumble? Did, I, did we talk about this yet? Um, I, uh, I drew from my retirement account and liquidated it. <laughs> All of Germa's event streams are stunningly creative, impeccably produced, innovative spectacles. The idea always comes first, and no matter how crazy or insane it seems to pull off, Germa and the team he has behind him haven't missed once. If I had no idea who Germa was, and someone asked me if I wanted to go to a baseball game where half the players were players and half the players were clowns, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. And that rule applies to everything he's ever done course some of his greatest events completely depended on community participation. He did a carnival stream where Twitch controlled robots and remote played carnival games. Way too high, way too high. That's not that, you gotta go lower. It's gonna fucking happen. I am as safe as you could possibly be. It's never gonna happen. You'll never dunk me, you fuckers. Fuck all of you. It's not gonna happen biggest event ever was a dollhouse stream, something that took place over three consecutive days, where chat essentially played sims with Jerma as the sim, controlling what he wore, what he did, who he talked to, and those are just the biggest three. He did an archaeology stream that spoofed the Pokemon card craze. He did a code word slime game, a Thanksgiving stream, all insane, incredible, beautiful labors of love that somehow managed to perpetually outdo each other. All because a guy in Boston liked TF2. Oh, this guy's gonna be kill me! Oh, good shot! I would say your name on camera, but I'm not going to. Rumpelstiltskin. I've had a really hard time writing the conclusion for this video. Because I think there's so much that I could say. I could talk about his skills as a performer, or his timing as a comedian. I could talk about how passionate his community is, how complex their lore has become how special it feels. I could talk about how universally respected he is by everyone on the platform, 
which is practically impossible at his size. But when I really think about it, if I'm really honest, the reason I made this video, the reason I was so drawn to Jerma after I learned he wasn't a serial killer, is because he's really inspiring. I think he's inspiring to a lot of young, weird, aimless creatives out there, and that's one of the reasons his fan base is so passionate. Jerma is someone who has spent the last 12 years making whatever he wanted to make. Even when it was hard, even when it was scary, even when it meant changing platforms entirely, he followed his creative instincts and interests wherever they led him, from TF2 gameplay in his parents' house to the deserts outside Las Vegas. And it led him here. Hey, I'm floored. Thank you to everybody that voted for me. Thanks to all the support. I actually really didn't think I was going to win this. I won't break this one. I broke the other one. Look at it on Twitter. I, I shattered it. I put, the, I put it down too hard. The natural continuation of that pattern only has one conclusion. Maybe he'll start doing more behind-the-scenes production. Maybe he'll try directing. Maybe he'll leave public life entirely and live in a nice house without a single dishwasher installed surrounded by sunflowers. But when the day comes, and it will come, when streaming doesn't creatively fulfill him anymore, he'll stop. And when that happens, he will have left tens of thousands of hours worth of laughter and a measurable amount of inspiration and millions of thankful viewers as his legacy. When it comes to streaming, there's no one better. What is going on guys? Jerma here with a vlog. Quick little update, I just want to let you guys know what's going on with the channel. I want to keep you guys in the loop. So. A lot of you guys have probably noticed by now there are ads on the videos, there are pre-roll ads and stuff like that, and that's because as of right now I am a machinima partner and it's unbelievable to me guys, I really can't believe it. And I got nobody to thank but all the people that support the channel. You guys did this. I mean yeah I make the content but you guys watch. And you guys are always supporting, and you guys are always so helpful, you guys are always so awesome. So thank you all so much, all my subscribers, you guys are fantastic, unbelievable. And I also got to thank the guys over at Respawn, at the Respawn app, you guys are just as awesome, because if it's not for you guys, maybe I wouldn't, wouldn't even be seen. You know, maybe something like that would have happened. But all the guys, all the employees at Machinima, I'm not going to let you down. I can promise you that. I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good, good night. I couldn't figure out a good place to put this in the video. But once a chatter asked Jerma if he wanted to be updated on any voodoo dolls they made of him, and he reasonably was kind of disturbed and asked if they could just leave him alone, away from any magic, and then the chatter came back and was like, Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to freak you out. I just won't update you about it. <laughs> Which alone, that's insane. But then Jerma asked other people in the chat to, like, counterspell? To do, like, a counterspell on the initial chatter's curse on him? That's just, that whole situation is so insane. Like, that's, that's entertainment, you know? <laughs> anyway, subscribe?